giving you a voice, making it loud our own way. Welcome, Welcome to, to the fun. fun. First updates now, FRC is produced in partnership with the Blue Alliance. Keep up to date on all live and archive first robotics events and team stats at thebluealliance.com. And by viewers like you. We need your help to keep fun at loud, live, and independent. Help us by visiting our Patreon to pledge your support at patreon.com forward slash first updates now. You can also support fun live on Twitch for a few bucks a month or by linking your Prime account for free and clicking subscribe. Good evening, and welcome to episode two of the Mouth of the South recap that covers events in Texas, Arkansas, Kansas, Oklahoma, Alabama, Missouri, Tennessee, and Louisiana. Tonight, we're going to take a look at the week one action in Texas, as well as looking forward to the upcoming week two events in the South. We'll also be discussing a controversial red card that was issued in El Paso. Refor reporting for first updates now, I'm Nick. I'm Marco. I'm Jeff, and we haven't seen our fourth host before, so why don't you introduce yourself? Hey everyone, I'm Michael Ray. Uh, I'm an applications engineer at ARM and head coach of uh, 6800 ViperBots Valor from Austin, Texas. I graduated from University of, Mich University of Michigan in 2016, and I Team Rush 27 alum. Cool. So to kick off our show this week, let's start by recapping the two Texas district events that occurred this past weekend. And Michael, why don't you go ahead and tell everyone what happened this weekend in the ATX? Thanks. Well, the Austin district this weekend uh, kicked off the exhausting process of getting through the first year of districts uh, in Texas. Load in and field issues delayed the start of matches as everyone had to stay very late on Saturday to compensate. Grinding out this long process were 36 teams, including perennial powerhouse teams 624 Kryptonite, 3005 Robochargers, and Chairman's finalists last year 2468 Team Appreciate. As seen around the week, world in week one, the cargo ship and level three hab were the, num the way to the number one spot. Surprisingly, 624 and 3005 were not amongst the top five at the end of qualification matches, although both found their way into finals later on. Continuing their hot streak from last year's division finals appearance, team 6377 Howdy Bots finished in first place with an eight and four record. Howdy Bots specialized in quick and consistent cargo scoring, as well as a giant set of suction cups to flip on top of level three. Close behind them was HowdyBot's mentor team 2468 Team Appreciate in second place. Both teams decided to go their own ways during elimination matches as 2468 decided to build their own alliance when asked to join the number one seed. HowdyBot's chose 4610 Vertex instead, whilst 2468 picked 624 Kryptonite. Elimination matches were going as expected until the fifth seeded alliance of 3005 Robochargers, 2714 Barbecue, and 2158 Austin Cans upset the fourth ranked team in their quarter quarterfinal matches, and then the number one seed in the semifinal matches in a best of three. The finals featured number two alliance of 2468, 624, and 3834 crab bots against the number five alliance of 3005, 2714, and 2158. The first final match featured 43 penalty points committed by the number two alliance due to G10 extending out of your frame perimeter on the other side of the field, a common mistake in week one. The fifth seeded red alliance took the match 101 to 73. In finals two, consistent cargo play and a level three climb helped the number two alliance win with a score of 71 to 62. Going to match three, uh, completed the evening with a very tight match where the climbs determined everything. The number two alliance took the match with a score of 73 to 63. Congrats to 2468 for the double cling bling with their district win and chairman's award. Winner 624 and 3834 and engineering inspiration award winner 6357 spring constant. Nick, on to you. Thanks, Michael. The second event in the inaugural weekend of the first in Texas district was the El Paso event. 27 teams made the trip to the western tip of Texas from all over the state, and even some teams came out from New Mexico. With each team getting 12 qualification matches, it would be the habitat docking ranking point that occurred in 26% of matches that would make the rankings. The team with the best climb at the end of the event was Team 118, the Robonauts of League City, Texas, and due to that, they would lock up the number one seed. The Robonauts also led the alliance that had the only unicorn match at El Paso by soloing the rocket, and then they had still had time to get on level three of the habitat. Team 6144 Angel Bots Golds would surprisingly rank second, having completed the habitat ranking point in nine out of 12 of their matches. 
causing them to rank higher than favorites 3847 Spectrum and 4063 Trickster for Kids, who would round out the top four of the rankings. 118 would go with Spectrum for their first overall pick, while Trickster for Kids would decline 6144, opting to form their own alliance. 6144 then picked up 5866 the Iron Tigers, and 4063 picked 4153 Project Y. The quarterfinals were smooth sailing for the 1, 2, 3, and 5 alliances, with each series only going to two matches. Semis would tell a different tale, where the 3 alliance, led by 4063, would sweep the number 2 alliance. The face-off between the number 1 and 5 alliances would start with a controversial red card earned by the number 1 alliance. More on that later. Matches 2 and 3 would go to, to the 1 alliance, um, earning them a spot in the finals against the 3 alliance. In Finals 1, the 1 alliance consisting of 118, 3847, and 5047 the Conquistabots, and the number 3 alliance consisting of 4063, 4153, and 4301 the SME, the SM Energy New Tech Narcissus, would both choose to stay on the lowest levels of the rocket and the cargo ship. Both alliance would get a level 3 climb in the end, but it was the number 1 alliance's cargo power that would lead them to victory with a score of 72 to 58. Finals 2 would see a very similar outcome, except both alliances would both would place one hatch on the middle tier of the rocket. The 1 alliance again dominated on cargo points, scoring 18 more than the 3 alliance, which would seal the number 1 alliance's victory with another 72 to 58 score. Congratulations to team 118 the Robonauts, 3847 Spectrum, and 5047 the Conquistabots for picking up the event win. El Paso also had not just one, but two, count them, two Klinglings, with the finalist alliance captain 4063 picking up the chairman's award and Spectrum picking up the engineering inspiration award. Yes, yeah, so 118 was clearly the dominant team at the event. To no one's surprise, it generated the most buzz throughout day one. As you mentioned, they had the Discord, Reddits, and the Twitters aflutter as they completed the rare unicorn match and solar rocket all by themselves before completing their HAB 3 climb. Day two came semifinal one, in which they came off the HAB in Sandstorm, promptly ejected a hatch with much vigor, causing it to do a flyby over the top of the cargo ship resulting in a prompt flag from the head ref for a violation of R6 G6, and G6, leading to a red card and a loss for that alliance. So, anytime you have the words red card and 118 in the same sentence, you're going to get a ton of hot takes and opinions, because that's how the internet works. So let's now turn to my distinguished co-host here and give our two cents on that match. Jeff, what are your thoughts on that? Okay, so really quickly, before I express my thoughts on this, I just wanted to quickly... I go over the rule that they violate, or the two rules, I guess, that they violated. It's, um, and I'll paraphrase a little bit, but it's R6, a robot may not be designed to shoot a hatch panel such that it travels more than three horizontal feet beyond its frame perimeter, measured from the stationary robot to where the hatch panel first lands on the ground, keyword there. And G6 is no throwing hatch panels, um, and it talks about how you can't eject them, uh, forcefully push them, and the violation for that rule is a red card. Um, so I've had a few days to think about this rule. Um, but trust me, if we were doing the show right after this card had been called, it would have had to be a candidly speaking and not a region recap. Um, but now that I've uh, calmed down a little bit, my opinion on this is that it was it was the right call, uh, right call according to the rule because the violation is a red card. However, I think that this rule should have been um, revamped a little bit, especially in the case where it's an accidental toss, because if a team, like, teams are going to mess up. Everybody knows that. And this kind of sends the message to teams that if you're not going to be absolutely perfect, then you can expect harsh penalties that are just blown way out of proportion. Um, and one thing I noticed was, um, as I was discussing this on Discord and in the Twitch chat as it was happening, um, there was one opinion expressed by a user where they said, it's 118, they'll be fine. And uh, that mentality is so dangerous. And like, yeah, I need to stop myself before I get a little too heated. But um, uh, what are your guys' thoughts on this? So Jeff, to add on to that, um, there's there's two rules in here for for one action, right? And that's kind of confusing part about it because R6 is is meant for inspectors. Um, you know, you're, when you're going through inspection, they're supposed to be checking. And I don't, I haven't been through an inspection yet, so maybe Marco, you can talk about this in a second. But um, at, during inspection process, I feel like that should have been checked. So therefore, during a match, I don't know if the red card is the right call because, I mean, it's stated in the rules, so that's what it is. But um, you know, if they've already been inspected, maybe we lowered that G6 penalty a bit because 
um, it, it shouldn't have been uh, to that at that point called anyway. So Marco. Yeah, actually, we were obviously a different LRI because we were in Austin, but at our event, they made us raise the elevator to the highest level and eject the hatch panel to measure uh, how far we were ejecting that. So, um, I mean, I do agree reading through it, uh, it definitely is the right call per what's written in the book. So I think there's probably, I don't see a whole lot of gray area in that, but when we're looking at it, um, it's clearly not intended to do that. There's no benefit to ejecting the cargo or the hatch panel in that regard. Um, so I think it's it's tough, but I think they followed it. And I think I would circle back to what Jeff was saying. Maybe we need to look and revisit that. Um, I think ultimately it comes from, it, it's a safety rule probably, right? They don't want to see hatch panels being flown uh, all over the place. And I think that's where the, the infraction comes in, but uh, it, it feels harsh, but I think it was the right call. And actually to add on to that too, looking at the chat, um, doesn't the hatch bounce to get to three feet? That's a good point. Uh, the cargo ship is right in front of them when they when they eject it. So it kind of uses the cargo ship to gain that extra uh, bit of distance. So who knows, that couldn't have, it might've actually been within the three feet when, when they went through inspection, but because of the elements on the field to help to carry a little bit. Yeah, it unfortunately does say when it first hits the ground. So uh, that was a little bit of an assist from the cargo ship there. Uh, you know, I, I personally think it was the right call as well. And I don't think that the rule should be entirely revamped. Because, I mean, if a team were to launch a hatch panel outside of the field and hit someone, I mean, that could cause some very serious damage um, and potentially be lethal depending upon the force. Um, so, I completely get it, and I completely agree with the ruling and how the rule is written right now. Um, cool. Uh, so uh, I think that's probably our, our two cents uh, on the issue. Um, moving on with week one in the books and FRC top 25 voting for this week officially closed. Let's take a look at the 10 highest ranked teams from the southern region uh, now that the voting has ended. So. It, to no one's surprise, uh, in the number one spot, we have 118, the Robonauts, followed by their uh, alliance partners, 3847 Spectrum, winners of Austin 2468 Team Appreciate in the number three spot, uh, newcomers uh, BBQ 2714 in the fourth spot ahead of uh, 3005 Robochargers, uh, number six is 624 Kryptonite, uh, 6377 Howdy Bots, the number one seed at Austin, take the number seven seed, uh, 4020 in the eighth position, Tricks are for Kids at number nine, and rounded up by 4610 Bear Techs at number 10. So uh, what are some of your thoughts on where the teams ended up? Who do you agree with? Who do you think might be ranked a little too high or a little too low? Uh, I thought it was pretty interesting. Number four, 2714 Barbecue. Uh, I think their uh, autonomous play was actually a little undervalued um, and, and should have been elevated a little bit more. They could score a uh, a hatch on the rocket level three, right, in auto, which not a lot of teams were doing. Uh, that was pretty pretty rare to see. So that was kind of cool to see them do that and nice to see them at least at the four position. I thought 4020 was a little low. Um, they competed at Palmetto this weekend, and they had a very rock-solid uh, level three climb. Uh, they ranked one at the event. Uh, and they ended up winning the event. Uh, they were a very solid team. I thought they were going to be higher. Hey, since Nick brought them up, I just want to mention real quick. So 4020, uh, just a heads up on these top 10, we do uh, pick these by where the teams are based out of uh, as well, too. So they might have competed in Palmetto, but they're going to be in this pole and not in the southeast pole uh, because we want to do it based on where the team is located. So just want to mention that and jump in. Yeah, and uh, to kind of pop off Nick a little bit, right below them, I think 4063 is a little low. Um, they performed really well. They've, they're not really well known, and even in Texas, just because of kind of where they're from, they're kind of from a less densely populated area. But they did super well. They were very consistent, um, and on top of that, getting that chairman's award, I, I definitely think they should have been higher. Uh, but now that we've seen this week's top ten, let's discuss who we think are good contenders for this week's FRC top twenty-five. Michael, why don't you start us off? Well, uh, as you guys saw earlier, uh, coming in at number three was 2468 for Texas, or sorry, the South region. I think overall they should be considered pretty high for a top 25 team. Uh, their their quick hatch mechanism was underutilized in week one due to the ability to use cargo to win matches. So they were able to kind of bypass using their, their hatch mechanism altogether by preloading with null hatches and then using cargo to win. Uh, additionally, they have everything they need to score in the top level of rocket when it becomes more relevant. Plus, their level three climb was spot on all weekend, all adding up to a great, well-rounded machine. Uh, my vote's going to be from the El Paso district event, and it's a uh, 3847 Spectrum. 
their hatch mechanism was super solid, um, and their cargo game was pretty awesome. Um, they were really good in the limbs at El Paso. Um, they also had a uh, side cargo ship sandstorm, um, so they'd leave one of the hatch uh, holes open and put a ball there, um, getting points that not every team was able to get, um, and kind of bypassing the more common get the center hatch. Um, and, you know, if they add on a level three climb, they will be incredibly competitive as the season progresses. Uh, for my pick, I want to show a little bit of love to the number one seed in Austin. Um, I think uh, they're maybe an outsider to get up there, but I think they deserve it. They're such a great team. Um, they're mentored by um, 2468, uh, and they're just a, a great team. They're super friendly, always great. And I completely loved their their climbing mechanism. It's this little boxy flippy boy that sits two suction cups and does a little headstand up onto the hat three climb they they nailed it eight out of the 12 uh matches and um they were just a really well functioning robot they they did a couple of things but they did them really well um and and it was a treat to see them compete in austin and uh going off what i said earlier my vote definitely goes to 4063 tricks are for kids uh they were extremely consistent throughout the entirety of the el paso event with their level three climb really efficient low cargo and hatch scoring and their excellent defense skills, which is something that not a lot of people would or thought would come into play this season. So it's interesting to see how that's playing out. Um, but captioning the third alliance all the way to finals, I'm really excited to see what they have in store for Del Rio in week four. Awesome. Well, uh, for the second half of the show, we're going to preview some of the upcoming South Di uh, District and regional events. Uh, so go ahead, Jeff, and start us off. All right, so starting off week two's events, we're heading to the Sooner State, where 63 teams will be competing for the gold at the Oklahoma Regional. 1806, winners of the Regional for five of the past six years, will not be attending this year, leaving the blue banner wide open. Lots of people will be watching for 1619 Upper Creek Robotics from Longmount, Colorado, who have yet to reveal their 2019 robot after their Einstein run last year. And though 1619 is one of the top contenders to win the event, yeah, uh, there's plenty of other teams to look out for. So something interesting that just got mentioned here is you said nobody's seen 1619 yet. Well, rumor has it 1619 might be revealing the reveal, the reveal video on the FRC Top 25 tomorrow. So uh, it is not 100% confirmed because I don't have the video in hand. Until I have it in hand, it's not confirmed to me. But uh, keep an eye out for that. We might be seeing Upper Creek's uh, reveal video tomorrow on the FRC Top 25 at 9 p.m. Eastern. Yeah, come on, Clint. Don't disappoint everyone. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, uh, that'll be exciting to watch. But um, one of the other contenders for this event is 6800 Viperbots Valor from the first in Texas district. Looking to get in some driver practice before their first district event in week four, 6800 is a good contender to take home the regional win after their all-star rookie season. With a dual side cargo mechanism and an efficient hatch mechanism, I see a large degree of success for them in the upcoming season. Mike, do you want to jump in? Uh, uh, to add on to that, so I coach 6800. Uh, we had quite a quite a cool season last year. We went to IRI. Um, we were at Worlds, one of the only three rookies to play in elimination matches. We just posted our robot today on Twitter and Instagram. Um, we are ready to go right into this uh, to this regional, which is kind of a cool opportunity for us because we get to actually unbag our robot, compete with it, fix it up before coming back into the Austin. Uh, sorry, back into the test Texas district events. Uh, to start gaining points for states. Yeah, sounds good. Um, another contender for the event is 2352 Metal Mayhem from nearby Ada, Oklahoma. After seeding first at the Oklahoma Regional for the past two seasons in a row and taking home the Blue Banner in 2018 with 1806, they'll definitely be looking to take home the win for the second year in a row just to kind of start a little legacy there. And up next is 2410 Blue Valley Caps Metal Mustang Robotics, who have one of the longest team names. Um, but they'll be looking to secure the win with their swerve drive, ability to place cargo and hatches on any level, and passive level 2 climbing capability. And lastly, but definitely not the least, is 3593 Invictus, who will be looking to take home another blue banner after winning the 2018 Turing Division and a series of upsets from the number 8 alliance. And finally, three rookies will be looking to take home the Rookie Inspiration and Rookie All-Star Awards. We'd like to welcome to the competition Team 7464 Orion, 7744 Wildcards, and my personal favorite team name of all time, 7473 Mechanic at the Disco. <laughs> and why don't you tell us what's happening over in Arkansas this week, Nick? 
All right, thanks, Jeff. Um, for our second event this week, uh, we have the Rock City Regional in Little Rock, Arkansas, where 60 teams, 16 of which are rookies and one of which is from Germany, will compete in the Barton Coliseum. With 16 and 3310 not attending the event, Rock City will be a lot more open than the last three years that, were, that have been dominated by those two. Looking to get their first time Rock City gold after being on the number two alliance for the past three years is team 3937 Breakaway. Another team that has consistently been in the shadows of Rock City is 2992, the SS Prometheus, who appear to be going for the lower levels of the rocket and the cargo ship while bringing a level three climb to play. 323 is also looking to bring the gold back to Mountain Home, Arkansas. It's a pretty good assumption that they're going to be bringing a swerve drive into the event. Now, speaking of swerve drives, uh, 5006 Apophis will come storming into the event uh, hoping that their extendo swerve modules will be enough to consistently earn that hab docking ranking point. Um, also competing is second year stars 6886, the synthesizers, who are looking to lock down their hab ranking point with their nice climber as well as a large pass through arm that will save them a lot of time on their cycles on the cargo ship at the rocket. Um, on the chairman side of things, um, there's a decent amount of competition between 3937 Breakaway, Team 1939, the Knights and Team 5437, the Rocky Balboa Bots, who won uh, the Engineering Inspiration Award in Galileo in 2017. With that, let's head down to Texas. Take it away, Marco. All right, thank you, Nick. Um, the Amarillo Civic Center Complex will play host to the inaugural Amarillo District event. 30 of Texas's finest will convene to face off and see who can blast off into deep space. This will be our first competitive glimpse of some of the top teams in the state, all of whom made some really deep runs at last year's Houston Champs, and all of whom are Team IFI. Coincidence? Uh, the powerful triumvirate there is led by Hopper Subdivision and reigning world champions 148 Robo Wranglers and their impressive robot Overhang. We'll also see the debut of Newton Subdivision champions, uh, or finalists, excuse me, Newton Subdivision finalists 3310 Blackhawk Robotics, who have actually played it pretty close to the best this year with virtually no information known publicly about their robot. Finally, we'll see 2018 Turing Subdivision Champs 1296, the Full Metal Jackets, who will surely hope to build off of their Cinderella year last year. Uh, in addition to the big guns, we will get to see 4153 Project Y and 4641 United, both coming off of finalist performances last week, and who will be surely looking to uh, another shot at grabbing a blue banner. Uh, the shiny new additions are sure to create a stir, but competing teams will continually feel like there's a glitch in the matrix as a feeling of deja vu will prepare all weekend long as 14 of these same 30 teams just finished competing against one another at the El Paso Regional. As we saw the week in the week one events, the ability to climb to the third half level will likely be the key to the standings. We've already seen some key players in the state not be able to manage to uh, pull that off in their first event, so we'll be tuned in to see how these teams fare out in West Texas. And finally tonight, let's go over to Michael as we wrap up our coverage of the Lone Star State. Thanks, Marco. So last but not least, it's the San Antonio District event. Uh, this event features 36 teams from the Central Texas area and seems to like a wide open competition. To be honest, I don't have a whole lot of information on this, which is pretty cool for next year's, uh, sorry, next week's recap, as uh, we're going to have some pretty unknown bots coming up uh, with some, with some blue, bla blue banners. With none of the usual powerhouse teams in attendance, middle tier teams like 3481 Bronx Bots, 45457 Grease Monkeys, and others can pull away. Uh, similar to this past week, I think the most consistent cargo manipulator and level three climber should win this event. All right. And uh, with that, we're going to thanks everyone, or we're going to say thank you to everyone who has watched. Um, if you want more first robotics in your life and like what we do, all that we ask is that you let others know that about this show and that this is the place to go for more FRC in their lives. If you have a few bucks to share, we appreciate it. But if not, we totally understand and we're delighted to have you on board. On behalf of myself, Marco, Jeff, Michael, and our producer, Tyler, I'd like to thank you for tuning in and thank you to all our moderators and chat. Our next show is We the North. Talk to you next week on the Mouth of the South recap. Bye. Thank you to all of our co-executive producers keeping fun loud, live, and independent. Pledge your support at patreon.com forward slash first updates now.